just as we flip 2D into 3D when we're looking at a photograph. We create space. So it's doing that in the space almost like we could try doing it right now. And we're all in 3D space. Flip it into 2D, find the line, and draw it. Okay? Shh. I see it right there. Okay, so that's simplicity of line. Okay, harmony of proportion. These, imagine being in a garden, or imagine being in space, any space, where not only the objects exist right where they should be, where it's, they're just perfectly placed in space, but the space in between all the objects is as perfect and as important as the objects themselves. Okay? In other words, everything equalizes. It's all perfect. It isn't just near perfect. It isn't getting close to perfect. It's bang on perfect. Okay? That's what I experienced in the gardens in Kyoto. Um, they were so resolved in their design that as a photographer to compose in that space was just like a dream come true. It's almost, I, I'm, you know, it's, you're clicking in to the sensibility of the designer who makes the gardens and adding your own influence as well, and your own voice as well. But it's just a wonderful experience to have something hit a state of perfection. A space of objects and a space in between the objects. And that's what I call harmony of proportion. So that's what I'm looking for when I see two. Simple line, harmony of proportion. And then the third part of the tripod of how I see is the quality of attention across the entire visual field. Everything is of equal importance. Nothing is more important than anything else. It all needs to be there. It's all essential. If it isn't essential, get out of the picture. Okay, it doesn't need to be in the picture. Everything is 100% important. Okay. So, and then there's more ingredients too. But that's, that's just a taste of what, what I was learning in those gardens. The other thing that I said before I showed you the prints is that I learned this. The garden is designed for a reason. And that reason uh, has something to do with outward beauty and appreciation, but it has everything to do with what, how it affects you. Okay, that's why gardens exist. They're a setting. They're like a setting in a play for you to step in and inhabit and complete that setting. Your presence completes the setting. And by virtue of being there, it affords you, it facilitates you having a certain experience. That experience is the art. That experience is essential to the art. And that experience is an internal experience. It's not just appreciating what's going on out there. It's seeing what is happening in here by virtue of being in the space of the garden. And it affects you. And it, you can design a garden to tune your interior experience and point it in a certain direction. And that direction can be a spiritual direction. And that is what's going on in the gardens in Kyoto. At least that's what's my experience. Um, what I'm trying to do as a photographer is photograph the garden, yes, but not only for what it is, but for what else it is. Okay, I'm trying to photograph the experience that I'm having in the garden. That is the subject of my photography. It's not the thing, it's my experience of the thing. Okay, that is the, um, that's the subject. So, let's look at some images here. We'll just go through these. And the reason I'm kind of getting into this is because this is, sets me up for everything that comes beyond this. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, this is Saihoji. This is the moss garden um, in the, on the west side of Kyoto. 
Uh, for those of you familiar with Japanese um, garden photography, you may have seen this grove of bamboo, which has been photographed by other photographers than myself. Um, it's in books. He's like, this is my interpretation of it. Uh, what I found quite wonderful was the little uh, red floating pile of maple leaves that were tucked into the bamboo. Why are they there? I have no idea, but it was just so, such a wonderful little blob of uh, fuzzy color, furry color. That I just loved it. Um, very simple, very straightforward, very, um, you know, establishing a mood. This is quite, this is six inch diameter bamboo that's 40 to 60 feet tall. And, uh, you know, you just lose yourself in it. And I actually photographed it the first time I went to Japan. And then came back and photographed it again when I stayed for a year. So. This is in the same garden and gives you an idea of what it's like there. And a little feeling for the mood, for the atmosphere of the garden. Which, there's no way you can be in a space like that and not be transported, not be affected um, by being there and quiet, quieting yourself down, basically, and, and turning inward somewhat. Um, so that you leave the space transformed from the person you were before you got there. And I'm very much interested in harmony and proportion, the space in between the dancing trees, getting it just right so that they can do their ballet on the stage. Uh, Sento Gosho is the Imperial Palace grounds right in the center of town, the center of the city. Um, simplicity of line, just there it is, it's very straightforward. Um, this was shot in the rain. I saw this and uh, set up and shot it as fast as I could. Um, this was as we were walking through the grounds, and there's a, a little crowd of people behind me. But uh, I want to show this before we have to move on. Um, to me, extremely metaphorical, you know, uh, way beyond what's going on just there. And um, this thought just flashed through my head. I just want to pay tribute to my printer, um, David Pollock, who I worked with very closely on, on uh, this show, on the canvases and on the box prints, and his ability through his, uh, really his masterful uh, skills to bring out what I want in my images um, through his printing. And thank you. So here we have a, a tree by a beach of smooth rocks. Um, that actually this is a very tiny section of the beach. It extends and it extends all you know, a big horseshoe shape. And all of those rocks were delivered to the emperor as a gift individually wrapped in silk. <laughs> so you can see the fanaticism we're dealing with here. But, um, and that's uh, wisteria over the bridge that's softly in the background. Misty, I don't think it was raining just then, but it was the mist just after the rain. And this, the story behind this is that there was a little army of um, tiny Japanese uh, women, kind of gnome women, um, with bamboo brooms, you know, approaching very quickly, brushing and brushing and brushing, and I wanted to uh, get the leaves before they got there. So and I, the estimated time of arrival, I think, was in less than a minute. So it was a very fast setup and a very fast composition. <clears throat> still expresses that uh, I love just a random drop of leaves. And I look for that in my work, too, that, that sort of random pattern that comes in nature that you could never get if you place those leaves by hand. Mm -hmm. so.